Hello and welcome back to the lecture on applied econometrics. Today we are going to talk about a concept called non-stochastic regressor. So till now all the regressions we have been doing, we are using the regressor which is essentially non-stochastic. Okay? So, so in, in this lecture we are going to understand what exactly a non-stochastic regressor means and how it is different from some other regressor which is actually more close to reality which is a stochastic regressor which we will talk about in the you know, next lecture. So how these two types of regressors are actually different. Okay? So by non-stochastic regressor, so we know the meaning of this term stochastic, stochastic always means random. Okay? So it is a non-random regressor. So what is a non-random regressor? Well, so when uh, we know the regressors are all our xi, so when all these xi's are actually generated through a non-random process. Okay? So let me write down generated through a non-random process. So what exactly it means? I should not jump from one jargon to another. Okay? So I should explain what do I mean by a non-random process. So essentially when I do not, my stochastic regressor does not have any random component, any component of uncertainty, any component of unknownness. Okay? So let me write it down. So the first thing is that no random component, no random component. And there is another part of it. Uh, when I have my uh, regressor non-stochastic, so essentially all the regressors, all the xi's, they are going to be independent of each other. Okay? So all the regressors are going to be independent of each other. That's a very, very uh, sort of restrictive assumptions that I'm going to make. And I'm going to make these assumptions because of what? Because it will make my life easy. So that is why I make this assumption that all the xi's or all the regressors are independent of each other, of each other. So that is the assumptions I'm going to make. Now I will just uh, will explain that that is actually not very real sort of assumption, and uh, you know that is why uh, we have to deal with stochastic regressor. Uh, but because of these assumptions, uh, you know the uh, when we do the regression, or uh, you know many many assumptions get simplified. So we'll, we'll explain we'll explain uh, what do I mean by these two conditions. Okay. So to actually explain non-stochastic regressor, let me actually give you an example so that will be easier for us to understand. Uh, let's say you are doing a survey, okay? and basically you will be using that survey data uh, and you have some idea about let's say the population census. Okay? Now I said that in non-stochastic regressor and, and you want your regressor to be non-stochastic and I said that in non-stochastic regressor the, you know, the, there is no random component. So that essentially means that the experimenter or the researcher is actually giving the value for the x size. Okay? So the researcher actually allocating the value for the x size. Now if I know let us say the population census, so let us take the example of let us say education distribution. Okay. So let us say I have seen the population census and I know that let us say there are 10 percent illiterate, then another 20 percent let us say they are primary educated then another 20 percent secondary, then another let us say 20 percent, oh let us say this is a middle, this is on the middle and then another 20 percent secondary, then let us say another 15 percent higher secondary, then another 10 percent let us say is my college undergrad and then the rest 5, 60, 70, 80, 80 95, rest 5 is my uh, masters and PhD. Okay. Now I know these distributions, the existing distribution uh, all, already. Now when I select my sample, since this is a non-stochastic regressor, since my xi is non-stochastic, uh, I actually allocate the value for the xi. So what do I mean by that? So that would mean that when I will select my sample for my studies. So I will select, let us say I have a sample of 200 percent. So what I will do, I will actually take this proportion to sort of decide my sample for each of these categories. Okay? So I will, let us say I have a total sample 200, so it would mean that I will actually select 20 illiterate, 40 primary educated, another 40 uh, middle, another 40 for secondary, another 30 for higher secondary, 
another 20 for college, and another 10 for masters and PhD. Okay. So you see that I have actually, I have actually given the sort of the values of the xi. So that is something it is not unknown to me. I actually know because I am actually deriving these values, or actually I'm you know designing my sample in a way, sampling in a way that it actually represents the population census. And this type of sampling is known as stratified sampling. Stratified sampling, okay which is essentially a non-random process. Now, that way I actually given sort of you know allocated the values or assigned the values for xi. So, one thing you need to remember sometimes you know people use that word fixed, people use the word fixed. Okay. So, perhaps it is a better idea to not to use fixed values because the values of xi are actually changing. So, it is perhaps a better idea to use the term deterministic, deterministic. So, we have a stochastic and this is deterministic. Now, this is for uh, education. Now, let us say if we go back to our means area and wage regression again and we will have you know several other variables like experience, age, you know your gender, rural, urban and so forth. So, for all the different variables you can actually assign or you know you, you sort of get the values of x i based on the uh, your population. Okay. So, all these values are independently given, they are independent of each other. Now, you can see the limitation here, I mean how all the variables could be independent, how the you know the gender distribution, how the education distribution, how the caste distribution, rural urban distribution, age distribution, how they can be independent of each other. So, um, that is where the restriction comes in uh, and that is why we need to use stochastic regressor. Um, so, this is somewhat an unreal kind of scenario uh, that we sort of assume. Okay. Uh, one example I can give you about stochastic and non-stochastic regressor is time. So, time is perhaps you know one variable where we really do not have any random component, right? but that sort of variable you can hardly see in reality. Okay, so, with this uh, we will actually end this uh, lecture on non-stochastic regressor and in the next lecture we are going to talk about stochastic regressor and we will we'll see the complexity that, that will arise if I take an, a stochastic regressor instead of a non-stochastic regressor. So, with this we will end this lecture here. Thank you.